Hi, welcome to our channel where we talk about everything film related. My name is Ivan. And I'm Brandon. And today we want to talk about a new product from Atmos, the Shinobi 7 Video Monitor. The Atmos Shinobi 7 is a seven inch monitor for your video camera that supports HDMI and SDI. Now, let's take a look at what's inside. <laughs> so inside we've got the monitor and underneath we've got the absolutely useless quick start guide. We've got our DC power adapter and Atomos has given us the pleasure of providing four different adapters depending on what your outlet takes. And as you can see, very easy to put on. You just stick it in here and turn it in and you're good to go. So the monitor consists of ABS polycarbonate plastic and it feels quite sturdy. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic. And as we flipped it back, you can see our SDI in and SDI out output and the HDMI in, HDMI out. You have the RJ45, the USB port, a DC in, and your two MPF battery mounts. Flipped to the side, we have an SD card reader for your LUTs and firmware updates, uh, which you can also do through the RJ45 as well, um, and your power switch and you have multiple venting from top and bottom, quarter inch mounts top and bottom as well. And on the other side, you just have a remote jack and a headphone jack. This monitor has an impressive 2200 nits of brightness. So even in direct sunlight, you should have no problem without a sun hood and still be able to see the monitor pretty perfectly. And at most claims that this Shinobi 7 can display 10 plus stops of dynamic range. So the Shinobi 7, straight out of the box, allows you to use a USB-C cable or a LAN-C cable, so you can control your camera directly through the monitor. Currently, the monitor only allows camera control through the Zcam E2 series cameras. However, with these two ports, there's lots of potential for future updates from Atomos to allow more assist features for other cameras. So also with this monitor, you can actually store eight LUTs internal. And if you want more, there's an SD card slot where you can have as many LUTs as you could ever want. The monitor comes in at 198 by 133 millimeter by 39 millimeter in size and weighs about 677 grams or 1.04 pounds without battery. So to turn the monitor on, you're gonna use the power button on the right hand side. So as you can see, the monitor turns on pretty quick at a little over 10 seconds to turn on. So once you've got the monitor turned on, we've got our main display here. Everything is touch screen on here. So we can see on the bottom that we've got all of our assist features. Um, we've got our magnifications here. We've got our focus assist. We've got our zebra. We've got all of our waveforms and RGB parades here. We've got our vector scopes and a zoomed in vector scope. We also have our aspect ratios by 16 by 9, 2.41, 2.35, and so on. We also have our margins and our title safe, as well as our anamorphic D squeezer for all your anamorphic lenses. And to go between each of them, you can just slide along the bottom. On our far right hand side, we have our settings to change all of your assist features. And as you can see, you can change quite a large amount. So you do not have to worry about that. On our left hand side, we have a yellow button here, which will give us a clean feed. When you're ready to record, you can click the bottom left button for your clean feed. And you can also click the power button once, which will actually lock the screen. That way you can't touch anything while you're recording. Along the top of the screen, we have 
are input, outputs, and audio settings. So you can click on any of those buttons there and that'll allow you to get all the information for your input and output as well as change your log settings. You also have your audio display so you can see the audio coming from your camera and you can also change your headphone monitoring volume. You also have your power setting which you can change your cooling mode which would be high fan with a peak brightness or you can also change it to a quiet fan with less brightness from the monitor. When you're using your NPF batteries, you can also see your voltage here. And then on your info tab, you can also see what version you're running on your monitor. As you can see, Atmos claims to be almost zero latency and we can test it out by waving my hand in front, which I think their claims are pretty spot on. As far as the fan noise go, it is very, very manageable. Our microphone is just barely out of frame right here. And you can have a listen. It's really not that bad. And it's basically on high setting with uh, brightness uh, turned up. While the monitor is operating, it can reach a high temp of 45 degrees, which isn't that bad to the touch compared to a lot of other competitors that are on the market, which are a lot hotter. So just like any other Atmos products, they do come color calibrated straight out of the box, which is pretty accurate. Uh, you can send them into Atmos if color starts to seem off and they can professionally calibrate it for you then. So according to their website, on a 5200 mAh battery, it can run up to two hours and three hours on 78 mAh battery. Uh, to our own personal testing, we did it on a couple different 550 MPF batteries and they both got us roughly around 30 to 35 minutes. But you can also run a DPAP to a V-mount battery like we are doing right here. And as for our 2200 nit brightness, let me just demonstrate that for you. That is 100% brightness. As you can see compared to the Blackmagic camera here, it is much, much brighter. So if you're thinking of picking up the seven inch, but you're unsure between whether you want the seven or the five, here's just some little tidbits that you might consider. The seven inch, not only is it two inch bigger, uh, it does have a 2200 nit brightness compared to the 1000 on the 5.2 in. It doesn't have camera control like the seven inch does. The five inch also only supports up to 4K 30, unlike the seven that can support up to 4K 60. And the five inch doesn't support SDI input. So in conclusion, with all the functions and features that the Atmos Shinobi 7 offers, this monitor works for many occasions, such as a field monitor, a production monitor, an on-camera monitor for YouTubers, vloggers, a studio monitor, a director's viewfinder monitor, as well as a focus puller monitor, and anything else you can possibly imagine yourself using this monitor for. The price tag is absolutely spot on for a monitor like this, with the quality you get, the color you get, and the brightness you get. Not only that, it's from Atomos, which is a very respected industry standard brand. At the $699 price tag, Atomos has hit spot on would we recommend this product? Absolutely. At this kind of price tag, having HDMI and SDI in and outputs and 2200 nit of brightness, you just can't beat it and find it anywhere else. If you have any questions about this product or suggestions for a future video, leave a comment. If you'd like to buy this product, check out our links down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, click subscribe and the bell to be notified for future videos, and we'll catch you in the next one.